Hi. Welcome and thanks for attending this talk about the provisional Vulkan extension for video encoding and decoding. My name is Victor Jaques. I'm from Mexico and I do multimedia programming for an employee owned company called Igalia. We mostly do web browsers internals. Most of my work is with GStreamer, a multimedia framework for creating streaming media application as browsers are. In the GStreamer community, I maintain some models such as GStreamer VAPI, which is planned to be deprecated in the future in favor of a new one. All in all, I am not a graphic developer, meaning I am not actively working on Mesa, Kernel, or Wayland, but I do have colleagues that are working on them. The graphics team. One day, they approached me and they told me that they became aware of a new extension in Vulkan for video decoding and encoding, and it looked similar to VAPI, which surprised me. I barely know OpenGL fundamentals, and I was hoping to dodge Vulkan for a couple of years more. But they added, we want to know if what you have been doing all this time with GStreamer and BAPI can be done with these extensions. And I said, what? <laughs> One of the consequences of that conversation are these slides. The purpose of this talk is to give an overview of the concept used by the Vulkan video extension. I learned these concepts by hacking a new element in GStreamer Vulkan, a H.264 video decoder. The extension supports, at this day, H.264 and H.265 encoding and decoding. But I can only talk about H.264 decoding, because that's what I did. Why do I want to talk about in the XDC? Well, because I wonder if these extensions might have, in time, a mess of Vulkan implementations, perhaps as a Gallium front end, such as currently OpenMax, BAPI, BDPAL, etc. I like to assume that everybody here knows what Vulkan is. Just to be sure that we are on the same page, just I say that. Vulkan is a cross-platform API under the Kronos Group umbrella, aiming for a huge number of tasks in graphic development. It is described as a common specification which boils down into a set of C header files, and its functionality is implemented by different drivers. Those drivers are provided by GPU vendors or, thankfully, by Mesa. So, Later on, I registered an account in Kronos, and as Igalia is a contributor member, the account was set up fairly quickly. And I got access to the Vulkan Video Technical Specification Group, or TSG. I knew then that the Vulkan Video TSG was proposed in May of 2018 to integrate hardware-accelerated video compression and decompression into the Vulkan API. On April of this year, the TSG published an introduction to the specification as is right now. If you're interested, please be sure to read the post. It goes into way more details than this book. Now a big disclaimer. The Vulkan bit extension is provisional and it's still expected to change. Driver code, the specification, are very new. They are not production ready. And as the, in the first maps in history, we ought to add the caption, here are dragons. Let's talk about video decoders. Nowadays, there are two approaches to video decoders, stateful and stateless. Stateful decoders basically work as black boxes. You get a bit stream and push it into the decoder. Eventually, you will get a renderable frame or an error. FFmpg API is like that. OpenMax was like that. Kernels before L API is like that, etc. Those are black boxes which internally keep the state of the every single stream being decoded. Stateless decoders, in the other, on the other hand, expect to resume the stream state 
on every single frame to the card. They don't keep the state. Midstream state consists on the picture reference, because the frame may depend on future and past frames, also known as the decode picture buffer, DPB, the picture parameters, and the picture segments, or slices, or tiles, or whatever they've been called in the specific codec. The application then is expected to split the stream in byte stream pictures, to parse frames parameters and its slices, to keep the DPV, and if everything looks fine, submit all that information into the decoder and wait for an output image frame. Examples of stateless video proce processing APIs are, of course, VAP, VAPI, the new B4L2 stateless in kernel, D3D11 in Windows with, for Microsoft, direct, direct show, and of course, bootcamp with extensions. Stateless decoders are gaining popularity because when using hardware acceleration, they require less chips, smaller blobs, and overall, they are less complex and they scale better but they pass all the parsing burden to the applications or frameworks. Talking about frameworks. GStreamer is one of them for streaming media applications, as we already said. Its fundamental concept is pipeline, which is a set of linked elements that either produce, filter, or rental signals. Those signals are discretized in buffers, and each element converts those signal segments into another type of signal which will be consumed by the next element in the pipeline. Set of elements can be packaged in plugins. Also, there are base classes and helpers for a wide range of multimedia processes. So my task was to implement a GStreamer element, which will process H.264 streams using the Vulkan video extension. Although GStreamer is more than 20 years old, until recently it merged the plugins and base classes required for this video decoder. To say, the GStreamer Vulkan plugin and the base classes for stateless decoders. GStreamer Vulkan is a plugin that uses Vulkan API to, among other use cases, upload CPU memory images into Vulkan images, renders them into the screen, do color conversion, etc. Besides, it's offer a set of base classes for many Vulkan API concepts, such as devices, queues, semaphore, fences, etc. On the other hand, GStreamer Codex State Handler is a new library with base classes for elements that parse and hold the codec state for several different video codecs, such as HVC, BP9, AB1, etc. Then, the new Vulkan element is a descendant of the GSTH264 decoder base class. What is required in the Vulkan site? One, the provisional specification with extensions, and two, a driver implementing the version of the specification. Right now, only NVIDIA Beta Driver does all that. If you have a recent NVIDIA video card, you may try it. Also, NVIDIA offers a repository with a video decoding example written in C++. Once compiled, it provides a common line application which decodes and renders H.264 and H.265 streams. Though, sadly, it is linked with a binary-only livery which does the parsing. Still, it's a good reference. And here is the URL of my Vulkan H.264 decoder merge request in the GStreamer Gets lab. It is still a work in progress, but already Matthew Waters, the author of GStreamer Vulkan, already did an initial code review. The first item in the to-do list is the Vulkan color conversion, conversion from MV12 format to a single descriptor, with a single descriptor to RGB, suitable for rendering. That's the reason, that's the reason sorry, why I cannot demo a rendering pipeline right now. The Vulkan Video TSG have the following design goals for the API. 
Programmers can allocate the exact hardware resources according to the properties of the stream to process. It can be used from embedded devices up to servers. It can scale up the number of simultaneous processes at streams by just adding CPUs and video devices, GPUs, VPUs, whatever. It is style integrated with the rest of the Vulkan API, so it will be possible to do pre- or post-processing of video images in Vulkan graphics pipelines as textures or so. The Vulkan video extension consists on three layer APIs. The root extension in red is Vulkan Kronos Video Queue, which provides a common API for either encoding and decoding. The next layer in yellow are composed by the code queue and encode queue extensions. The last layer, not in the diagram, sorry, are codec specific APIs. Mostly they are C structures representing the picture parameters and metadata for the specific codec. When writing a video decoding application, the common initial steps are the following. First, to find a Vulkan physical device with the video queue extension and the video decode queue extension. If there is not any, if there aren't any, the application should halt. With the phone device, the application must look for a queue with a family type of video decode bit and the H.264 codec operation. If they are not, the application should halt because it cannot process that codec. If available, we have to instantiate that queue. Third, query the device capabilities and verify if the requested stream fits with those capabilities. If they don't, if the stream is bigger, the application should halt. Later on, we have to instantiate the video session, which is an object associated with a single process stream. It specifies the codec profile. For example, in X264 can be main, constraint, baseline, high, etc. The maximum frame size, the DPV length, output color format, input chroma, input luma, and so on. After creating a video session instance, and before the object can be used for any decoded and encoded operations, the application must allocate and bind device memory resources to the video session object. The required memory resources can be fetched by just querying the created video session. Then we have to instantiate a video session parameters, which is an object associated with a segment of current process stream. A video stream can consist in several segments for different with different parameters. In the case of H.264 decoding, a segment at least contains a sequence parameter set, SPS, and a picture parameter set, PPS. A stream may use one of each or multiple sets in different segments of the stream. And you can add, later on, video session parameters as required by the stream, or the later created new ones. After instantiating these objects, now you can call the command decode video, uh, which is the only AP call in the video decode queue extension. It submits this, this command, it submits into the Vulkan command buffer the picture data to the code, such as bitstream slices, references, and output image memory. But the command decode video should be guarded by a pair of common buffer submission calls, which are common begin video coding and common end video coding. These API calls are common to the coding and encoding, and they are defined in the video queue extension. Common begin video coding receives parameters, among other definitions, the video session object and the video session parameter object. And finally, the command buffer, buffer queue will receive a sequence of commands. Queue a command to wait for a semaphore, to queue a command to begin video coding, queue a command to video encode, command to end video coding, command to wait for, for semaphore signal, and, sorry, and so on, until we demand a decoded frame to be rendered or used as a reference. For that, 
a fancy submit and we wait for it. In the GStreamer element, Vulkan H.264 decoder, each frame is fancied, so that's a future optimization task. And that's it for my side. Thank you very much for your time. And if you have any questions, I will gladly try to reply them. Thanks. Simon Sayer asks, any plans to implement it in MISA from any vendor? Uh, hello, because you can hear me all. Uh, as far as I know, There are not uh, even though in the in in the TSG in the technical specification groups there are vendors from different uh, GPUs uh, manufacturers and but I don't see anyone from MISA participating early but. The idea of this talk is to open this that, that idea into the mess. Okay, it looks like there won't be any questions for now. So please hop onto the IRC uh, in case someone asks some more. And then thank you very much for your great talk. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.